Awesome. Well, um, hi guys. Um, read through the sheet a little bit on your desk if you want as I'm going through, but um, a lot of what I'm talking, like Aaron said, is based off of kind of what's in front of you guys. Um, so, um, I'll start with a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in South Africa. Um, so, with that being said, um, South Africa is a British-based country, so I actually was exposed to rowing kind of about where you guys were in high school. Um, and it kind of all started there. Um, I went to Liberty and studied exercise science, um, which really opened doors to understanding kind of the rowing motion for me. Um, but I graduated in 2012. Um, and most of you guys know um, Coach Mark I. Furler. Uh, and I hear, hear you guys have two. Um, he was my coach. Um, so I kind of was with him as he grew our program. Um, so my freshman year, second semester is when I kind of started everything. Started rolling for a semester, then realized I preferred to be a coxswain. Um, so I started that my sophomore year um, in college. And then I worked mainly with men, like Aaron said, men's and four, uh, fours and eights. Um, and then I did some women here and there, but kind of like men a little bit more than women. Nothing wrong with women, I just prefer the men. Um, and then I am on my second year coaching both men and women um, as head coach for Liberty. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about, just kind of to give you all a breakdown, the privilege of being a coxswain, challenges of being a coxswain, tips to being a coxswain is kind of what was on the front page there, um, how to look at your season overall. Um, the week before your race, the day before, the day of, and after your race, um, how to look at things and then kind of the differences between your seasons fall and spring so with privileges of being a coxswain you get to be a leader um, a lot of times coxswains it's like you don't get a captain title but you're a coxswain um, and it is amazing you get to be in control of this wonderful boat and the people in front of you but with that comes great responsibility and expectations on you it's not an easy job it's a job rowers might not always understand um, and that's fine. You don't really always understand how it is to row. Um, so understand there is that difference, but there's great expectations because you're leading a boat. Um, so that means taking responsibility in situations that aren't always the best, um, and then also being able to enjoy the work that your rowers have put in, the hard work they do physically, you get to enjoy on the tail end where you guys kind of do more the mental side of things. Um, strategy is in your hands. You guys get to kind of race plan. Y'all, it's all you guys. If you're in, as much as your coach says, this is what I want you to do, you are the ones who are going to fulfill that. Um, the strategy is in yours, and strategy is huge to being able to win a race and to do well. Um, so strategy and rowers, if you know, like, oh, I always hit the 750 meters in, and I, I'm gone. Like, I'm mentally not in that boat. Tell your coxswain that, and then your coxswain will be like, oh, 750 in, I have to, you know, call out this person's name and bring him back in and motivate them again and start that. Um, so the strategy, as much as it's in the coxswain's hands, rowers, let them know what you need to. Um, it goes kind of both ways. Um, as a coxswain, your ch way of thinking is always going to be challenged. You'll have eight women or eight men in your boat, and they all think one way, and then, you know, next week your coach is like, oh, I'm going to take this person out and put this person in. Great. Remember, it's going to change. That person's not going to think the same or want the same things as the person. So always be kind of challenging how you think um, and adapting to those around you, um, which is also part of that challenge is steering your boat. Huge. Um, I was with the women this morning. You all did pretty well um, on the coxswain. And remember, steering a boat is different between eights and fours, small, tiny adjustments. Boat's going to move a little differently depending on who's in your boat. 
Um, so think about that. And think about different ways to turn your bow. If it's a slight corner, you can just have one side row harder than the others. You don't need to check down all the time. So kind of start watching how your boat is moving um, and try different types of steering. Practice is a perfect time to do it. If you're doing a piece um, and you don't have to weigh enough to turn a boat, try and do it. Try and kind of, in a sense, push those limits. Don't damage a boat. Don't push it if you're close to land or anything. But try and turn quickly or turn slowly and kind of feel that boat out. Um, it'll change it, especially if you get to a course where, like, if you ever go to Charles one day, that steering is, it's a lot of steering. And if you know how to steer now, by the time you get to that, it's not as intimidating going into that race. Um, and again, just safety first when you're doing that. Um, just make sure it's safe to steer um, where you're going. Um, and then the other big challenge is meeting the needs of each rower. Um, like I said, just on motivation, each person's going to be different. So to know how to motivate your bow pair versus your stern pair um, and the different roles they're making um, in that boat, whether it's timing or power that they need, meet each person where they're at. It is a huge challenge. There's one of you and eight of them sometimes it's like, oh, like each person's different. And rowers understand that they're not going to be able to meet each and every one of your needs. So give them like one specific thing for a race to focus on. Be like, all right, rower, like pick, okay, my timing or my handle heights. And your coxswain will know that's the focus for this person. And then they have eight things kind of going on instead of like, 16 or 30 things because everybody wants different things so pick like your main priority and work with your coxswain on that and be like hey coxswain like this is what i want to be focusing on and then start to develop that together um, as a boat ultimately you are a team it's different roles but you're one boat and you need to row together um, on that so those are the challenges look at your season coxswains when you're preparing um, if you have the ability to know what courses you're going to be on look them up the more you know, if you know what your course is going to be, whether it's a straighter course or a turning course, know that. Look them up, and then you get to practice, and you can say, like, oh, I need to practice turning, or it is more of a straight course. I need to stay straight. So look ahead at your season, what races, what courses you're going to be at. Not every course is going to be up online all the time, or some of them might just be scrimmages thrown together, but um, definitely look at it. Um, another thing, YouTube. Wonderful internet, guys. Internet has so much. Look up videos. Um, even if it's not your specific course, look up Cox and videos. There's a lot of things they say that you can pick up on. Um, a lot of different courses. You can kind of see some how they steer. GoPros are everywhere. Um, so look YouTube up. Like search rowing. Um, you always, research is key. Knowing how to cox a boat specifically that you are in, but then how others do it. Um, every coxswain will have their own style. Um, that's just kind of how it is. Everybody gets in, they want to say something slightly different, or your boat needs something different. So YouTube, great resource, always use it. Um, and then also coaches, talk to them. They'll know kind of more specific what boats need, um, what courses you're going to be at. Um, setting up your goals. It's huge as a coxswain. Look at your season. How many races do you have? Do you want to have a certain number of podium finishes? Or do you want to get faster from time to time, like course to course? Um, what leadership qualities as a coxswain or as a captain? This goes to stroke seat, um, seven seat. Each person has their role. So set a goal in it and decide what you want to meet this, this season. And coxswains, talk to your boats. If there's five minutes on the water where... Like your coach is like, oh, just wait, I'll catch up to you in a second. Take the time and be like, how are you guys doing on your goals? Have you set goals? Um, goals are huge. If you're not working towards something, then it's kind of like, where's the motivation coming from? Um, so set that up. And then any changes, my rowers, for me, they, I used to say, we're almost there. And they were like, we hate almost there. Is almost there 100 meters or 250 meters or 500? And so, like, it took... Oh, I, it legitimately took me like maybe two months to stop saying almost there because it was just a natural thing I said. So things like that, little tiny changes um, start kind of making those differences. Um, so, yeah, and be realistic. Talk to your coach if you're not sure if something's good or talk to your rowers and know where those changes need to be made. But set those goals. The week before your race, try and find a map of your course. Um, that's a huge, huge helpful. If you know what course you're doing and you can start preparing, like I said earlier, changes the whole thing. If you know what course you're going to be on, um, and beyond the map, know like where the docks are, where your warm-up is, how long 
um, you'll have for warm up. Um, and then start talking um, with your boat as well as your coach. Like, how, what do you want to do for warm up? So, you guys have a set warm up, or if you know going into your race, like your boat's been having trouble setting, um, what drills can you do to help set that boat in balance? All those types of things, week before your race, start putting those in place so that you have that time to work on it. Um, yeah. Make a race plan. Looking at that course, how long is it? Um, at what point do your rowers get tired? Or at what point does someone start to kind of get sloppy? Um, or do they rush in the beginning? If a boat comes up, are they controlled and collected and strong rowers? Or do they kind of get frantic and start to panic? Um, so know things like that. Strokes, distance, pick focuses in that race. So set it up, 5K season. I break it up into 1,000 meter pieces. What is my main focus for 1,000 meters? It means I only need five points. Um, and then within those 1,000 meters, break it down again. How often do you want to tell them where they're at at the course? Or um, just even leave 20 strokes just to motivate um, and to tell your crew, like, they are doing a good job in this area. Let's start fixing this. Um, just encouragement, things like that. Break it up into little sections. Make your make your kind of rough plan, and then take it to your rowers. Take it to your coach and say, okay, does this look good? Is this kind of what, I, what you were thinking? Do you think this meets the needs of my rowers? Or rowers, is there something you want to say midway, like let's say this. Um, my note with my men's four, they are not allowed to talk at all, but they are allowed to encourage each other. It doesn't mean that they're, they're not allowed to say, oh my gosh, set this boat, but they're allowed to say like when they're passing a boat, they literally will yell, let's take them, let's get it. And they get involved in it, and it encourages your boat. So think about it as a rower, and Cox has taught you rowers to be like, you can talk if it's encouragement, but not all the time. You're allowed a little spurt or something or things like that. So talk with them. Make that race plan. It is key. The day before your race, print the race plan. Make sure it's either written out or somewhere where you can refer to it. If you can make it waterproof, even if it's just taking tape and taping it on a little index card, great, because then you'll have it wherever you go, um, and it'll be great. Trust me. Print the course map so you can look at it. Um, a lot of times you'll get to a race if it's a little crazy or if your coach for some reason isn't there and you don't have it. Like, look at it. Know where you're breaking it down. Reiterate the courses. Talk to your rowers through the course. If your rowers can see the map, they're a lot less likely to be like looking out and being like, oh, where, what turn is this at? What's coming up? They'll be focused on what they need to do um, if they kind of can see a map and know what's coming in their kind of race. Um, I always like to print out a race schedule for like at least mine. Like when is my race? What time? What's my bow number? What boat? What oars I'm using? Your coach should have that, but it will help your coach a lot more if you know what's going on. Um, and a lot of this is just kind of how... It was just easy. When I had Mark as a coach, he was the only coach, and he had a lot of rowers, so it was helpful if I knew what I was going into, um, and I knew what to expect, and then it took the pressure off of everybody else, and then when your rowers are like, oh my gosh, what oars do I use, or what boat, like, you should know, they should know, um, found number, you know, get it, um, where you should be lined up, all that stuff. Um, know what time you can launch and check your boat accordingly. So if you know you can launch 45 minutes before, make sure an hour before, one, your rowers know to be there and what they know what to be checking. Um, kind of have a checklist, go through it with them, make sure they're checking their boat, everything's set, and then you know 45 minutes when that comes, you're not getting to your seat and being like, oh my gosh, like my back stays broken or something, and then your rower, your coach has to come run in and fix it. It'll give them kind of some nice time to flow. And just be, like, make sure you're, again, your rows know what time they're racing, and what time they need to be at the boat, and then everything will kind of run smoothly. The day of your race. Coxswains, things to take on the water with you. 7 16th wrench, or if it's a different size wrench, um, do that adjustable wrench, electrical tape, water, and Gatorade. Those are the things. Um, always helpful. If anything breaks on the water, your coach isn't there to fix it, and you don't want your race to be compromised just because something kind of was loose. Um, so always make sure you have those on you, and rowers, like, feel free. Ask, be like, hey, do you, need, like, do you need a wrench? Do you need something? Take it on. Electrical tape. Um, I was amazed by how much can be solved by electrical tape. 
um, when I got to crew. If your rubbers have a blister that like pops, tape it up. It'll take away some of the pain, little things like that. Water or Gatorade, um, just after the end, you just need like one water bottle at least, pass it um, down the boat at the end uh, will be great. Sometimes I even would bring my rowers like a mint and they're like, oh my gosh, like they loved it. And it's like something small um, you can do it, especially even on long days on the water. If you know you're going to be out for a few hours, if you bring them a little snack, rowers love to eat. Um, so it'll help them out. Um, also, the day of your race, make sure um, if you're sharing boats, no, um, or if someone's double racing, no. Um, be aware and be like, oh, I'm going to have to grab food for a rower or extra water. Um, and not that you take it on the boat with you, but kind of assign someone be like, oh, if you're going to be around, can you make sure you grab water and like a breakfast bar or something for your rower and just make sure that your rowers are taken care of. A lot of being a coxswain is serving your rowers. Um, not you're a leader, but it's a leader through servantship. Um, and it really is coming alongside, alongside your rowers and saying, what do you need and how can I help you? Um, and when you, your rowers are going to see that you're helping them, they'll be a lot likely to help you, and it'll kind of go in tandem. A lot of it really is learning to work with um, your boat as a whole. It's hard. You are going to coordinate eight people's personalities, um, which can be very different. Um, but think of it as a wonderful challenge to merge people together um, and do that. And this is one of the most important things to me coming up after the race. Um, make sure after the race that you take time to reflect on how it went. That's where you're going to learn the most about what you did. You might have had a great race. You might have come first, second, third. Awesome. But there's still stuff to learn from that. Why did you get first? Or why did you get third place? Why did you, like, was it good rowing? Was it bad rowing? What improvements and changes did you make? And did it work? Um, Self-reflection is always a good thing. And ask your rowers, be like, okay, what went well? What did I say that helped you out? Um, or was I motivating enough? Or is it that maybe we can change our focuses per 1,000 meters? Things like that. So always go back and reflect to after that. Um, also look at other schools. If you raced another school, why did they do well? Um, did you catch someone and did they panic? Um, and that's why you passed them, or did you row, like, or was someone catching you and you stayed strong and stayed ahead? Things like that. So look at other schools. Why did they pass you, or why didn't they pass you? Things like that are always good areas to, like, learn in. Um, and then after you've reflected, what do you change going forward? Um, so, again, reassess, talk with your rowers, things like that, um, and make those changes. And then the last thing, I know it's kind of quick here, fall versus spring seasons. Your seasons are different, um, and your rowers will need different things. Um, in those long distance, it's a lot more about kind of endurance, not a sprint race. Um, so know where they are on the course, boats around you, and then form and motivation. Those kind of three things are crucial in your long distance pieces. Form and motivation mainly because they're going to get tired and it's really long. They're going to be distracted. You're going to want to bring them back in the boat, make sure form is doing good, um, things like that. But realize your rowers are going to need something different. Whereas for sprint um, races, so your shorter distances, break the, the entire thing out by five and tens. So those strokes, five strokes, ten strokes. If you can have literally something to say for every single stroke, your rowers are going to know, like, they'll there's not even a chance for them to get distracted in those 5Ks. They'll really push. So know how many power 10s you can do. Um, and another thing on power 10s, you can call it different. Um, for mine, it's not just power 10s. It was big legs or powerful strokes. Give them different names and describe them differently, and you'll realize that different rowers are going to click in with different keywords. Um, and rowers, if you know, like, oh, I want to hear this. Um, my rowers wanted a slingshot sprint. It was just the thing they wanted, just a little term to be like, oh, let's do it. Um, so think about things like that, fun stuff within your boat. If you can get eight people to agree on like, all right, let's call our special sprint something um, at the end, you can do things like that. So as you head towards short differences, break it down. Um, know kind of approximately on your cox box, look, it'll tell you the count number. Be like, okay, my first 2K took 250 strokes. So let's plan for 250 strokes, what I can say for a lot of them. 
Um, it does take work to make a good race plan um, for a different one. So um, take the time to do it. And those short distances too, you're going to want as much power, push them as hard as you can. Know what to say to your rowers when they get tired and they don't want to pull anymore. Um, I know for me as a coxswain, one of my biggest mistakes in a course, I called a sprint at 750 meters because I didn't see a buoy. And my men had to sprint for 750 meters. So it was a huge distance. But I knew, I was like, oh, it's, I called it wrong. And instead of being like, oh, I called it wrong and panicking, I was just like, this is the time for me to say, I'm going to take every ounce of energy out of them. And we ended up coming second by a little under two seconds, which was like huge for my boat. And they were super excited. So it made my mistake not so bad. Um, but one mistake is going to happen. But overcome them find out how to really push your rowers if you can learn or te learn to teach a rower that they have a lot more in them to give your boat's going to work a lot harder for you um sea positions um in short distances instead of just saying kind of where boats are around you for the long distances sea positions be like you are on two seat you're on six seat be very specific um I'm not I'm sure it works for you guys. If you guys can know lineups and you know someone's name, um, it really is like, it is the scariest thing when you're rowing and someone's like, oh my gosh, like you are on Robert. And you're like, wait, how do you know who's in my boat? Like it scares people, trust me. So if you do your research, you know another team's lineup and you're specific about it, it's great. Or if someone else calls your name, you're like, I don't want them to take my seat. This is mine and hold your ground on it. So be very specific with things if you can. And then again, form and motivation um, is really crucial for it. A lot of what I learned through was listening to what my coach was saying to me. Um, so you have the motivation to learn and then the ability to change kind of how you say and speak. You're, just because you're not physically rowing doesn't mean that you can't do stuff. A lot of rowing, and, well, a lot of coxing is intelligence for your seat. Learning the stroke, know what your coach means by feathering squaring, rolling up early, or if they say a term and you don't understand it, go back to their coach and be like, all right, explain to me what you want from my rower specifically. You're almost, I view myself as like a little mini coach. Um, so to be like, I need to be able to coach my team on the water when my coach is not there. So a lot of it is learning drills. Know what drills your coach likes to do a lot. And then when he says five and glides, you know exactly what he wants from it. Um, so just a lot of it as a cox, and look at that seat as an ability to serve your rowers and be that connection between the coach and the rowers. And then as you develop your seat and you know your rowers and you're able to say, okay, balance is off. Why is it off? What's the issue within my rowers? Your coach will literally be able to say, okay, I need you to do this for me. And they'll trust you and your rowers will trust you. Or your coach can even come to you and say, all right, six seats a little funky today. What what did you see? What did you notice? What did you were they off timing or why? Things like that. So almost kind of view yourself as a mini coach that's in training. Um, learn everything your coach knows and be able to apply it to your rower specifically and break it down for them. Anything else? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, for me, when I started co coxing, they were always like, "Oh, they're just the loud person that yells." On, um, on that, like yelling's not an all the time thing. There's a time to yell, um, but realize a lot of it's diction. How you say something as a coxswain is how you make them row harder. So if I'm, if your rowers are in a panic and you're like, oh my gosh, fix this, fix this, fix this. They're not going to fix it because they're listening to your tone. If you say, and literally don't, rowing sometimes is really fast. Don't think you have to be talking every single stroke like that. Literally say, all right guys, I need you to take deep breaths here. We're going to calm down. We're going to slow the stroke rating down and we're going to catch together on the next stroke. And they might have taken three strokes in the time you say that, but you calming your voice down will really help. Um, and then things like the catch end and the finish end where it needs to be quick and precise, be quick and precise. Don't say catch, it's catch, finish. Fast arms, slow arms. 
Um, things like that, your rowers are listening to you. You want them to be engaged to how you're doing it. And then whether or not they can hear a specific word, if it's a tone, they'll, they'll calm down or they'll speed up. Um, at the end of my races, no matter what, if it was sprint, I was wanting, I was, I mean, like, it was good. I wanted them to be hard, rowing hard, which meant I was loud. Um, it doesn't mean yelling. Um, loud and yelling are two different things. Um, and remember that. Sometimes you need to be loud to have people hear you and not yelling at them. Um, rowers, just like, you, like when your parents yell at you, it's never fun. Don't yell at your rowers. But sometimes you need to be loud to get them to pull harder. Um, if you know you can yell coxswains, if you're going to be loud, use your stomach, not your throat. Um, it'll help your voice last longer, and it'll actually, like, it ends up being a little bit more deep voices for women. Um, but it really does help. When you count those power tens, if it's a powerful, strong voice, they will pull powerfully and strong. Um, but if you're just going to be like, okay, one, two, versus one, two, it is quick, it's powerful, and they'll actually start to pull like you're speaking. You're, as a coxswain, the way you speak is the way they will row. Um, and so you're rowing by voice. Um, if you want them to calm down, you calm down. If you want them to speed up, you can speed up. Um, things like that. That kind of help answer? Awesome. Anything else for you guys? Anything from rowers? What do you expect? Anything like that? Or things that have gone wrong? How to fix things? A lot of that I learned through watching like YouTube videos, listening to what other people say. Um, because yeah, like I, I had a nice habit. Like I knew what I liked to say, and my diction was the same. I used the same words all the time. But I'm a lot of it's talking to rowers, being like, "What do you like that I have to say?" Or like, when I say I need you to be strong, what words do you think of when strong? Um, and things like that. So. Power, that's where, like, we said power 10, and we switched to, like, big legs, and then to explain to them what big legs mean. But a lot of my changing in it was listening to YouTube videos and then talking specifically to my rowers and saying, what do you like to hear? And if they were like, and as a rower, this is important. If you ever go to your coxswain with an issue, have a solution. Don't just say, here's all my problems. Solve them for me. Come to them and say, I don't really like that you say almost there. Can you give me a specific distance? Um, and that'll change it. So, like, as you go through that, finding new words, theosauruses are great. Pop in the word strong and then see what comes out and be like, can I use that? Um, can I switch how I use a word? Um, so things like that kind of helps me develop it. But a lot of it was coming from my rowers. Um, the coxswain is there to help meet your needs, but they're also meeting the needs of a coach. So they kind of play two roles. Um, so kind of be aware of that as you approach them. Like, what is the coxswain they need to do from the coach's point of view. Sometimes the coach is like, you have to say this. Um, so, yes. Anything else? Yes. I know there's more questions. <laughs> uh, as a novice coxswain, so new to the sport, and you're put in a position of trying to play with four or eight rowers and move them down a course and get them to listen Um, for really new coxswains, um, one, focus on steering first. Um, and rowers, sometimes it's hard for novice coxswain because you want a lot from them and they're still learning. Um, whereas when we put a novice coxswain in a boat and they know nothing, you want them to have a coach's knowledge sometimes. And it takes time, so be aware of that. And Raj, you want to help them. From the coxswain's point of view, steering first. It's huge up on safety. Safety is the first time the first thing you should look at, like, is what I'm doing safe? Can I safely steer my boat and keep my rowers 
on top of the water instead of in the water. Um, crucial to that. Second, um, work one thing at a time. I kind of when I've gotten the seat, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to know so much. Pick one goal a week and be intentional on learning it. So don't ever get in a boat and be like, oh, I'm just tired today. I don't want to change the way I say something. Um, every day, your rowers are pulling harder and learning how to change their stroke. You're you're learning how to talk differently or say new words, things like that. Um, so take it slow. And if your rowers are kind of talking back or kind of issues with you, sit them down. Um, there was multiple times I would be like, all right, we're going to have a talk here. I just had to stop my boat and say, all right, you guys are making me panic because you're talking over me, and I can't concentrate on what I'm doing. I just need you guys to be quiet so I can actually learn something. Um, and a lot of it is bringing people to your page and saying, okay, I want to be a better coxswain, but I need your help and you need to be doing this. Um, so saying, be quiet so I can listen to the boat or listen and hear what my coach is saying. Um, but a lot of it is being attentive in that seat. We're going to throw, as coaches and sometimes rowers, but as coaches specifically on Cox, and we'll throw a lot of information, or you'll hear a lot of information, realize it's an opportunity to learn. If your coaches use specific words, be like, oh, I need to remember that word, and it'll help. And you'll realize that naturally your, vo like your vocabulary is going to change, and you'll be able to say stuff alongside your coaches. But be patient with yourself. It is a huge learning curve. Um, and I know for me, like, sometimes I go home and be like, oh, my gosh, the men just yelled at me all day today. And it was overwhelming, and it made me want to quit. Um, but I would touch base with um, my coach and be like, coach, like, they were just so difficult. What can we do? How can I meet them where they're at? And a lot of it came back to talking to my rowers. And we would do days where it was, like, completely silent coaching or silent rowing. Like, my rowers didn't say anything, just simply so I could learn. And it was a need that the coxswains have, to, like, in order to be better. If you want your coxswain to be better, you're going to have to respect that their learning is going to be different um, and meet them where they're at, um, a lot of it. But really be patient with yourself one change at a time. Those are the key things. Anything else? Yes. So uh, if you're from the rowing point of view, if your rowing team knows that another rower is making a mistake and the coxswain hasn't picked up on it yet, mm -hmm. should you try to remind them about that or should you just wait until the coxswain picks up on it? I would wait until you get off the water and then go to your coxswain and say, hey, do you realize six seat does this? Um, as a coxswain, especially in an eight boat, you're watching eight oars, eight people, you're being aware that there's a log here and the turn's coming up. So sometimes it's not that they're not, they can't see it, it's just there's so much going on, they're going to prioritize differently than you are as a rower. But to say like, hey, did you notice this person's doing this? And yes or no, then be like, can you look out for it and call them out? Um, and coxswains, be specific. Don't say, handle heights, everybody. If there's one person with handle heights, be like, two seat, lower your hand. Lower your hands. Do this. Be as specific as possible because once each rower is fixing something, then it gives them one a specific focus. Because sometimes rowers are like, I'm rowing great. And then they're like, handle high. like, yeah, mine look good. Uh, and they don't realize it in perspective to eight other people in their boat. So be specific with it. But if there is an issue, go first to your coxswain. Um, a lot of rowers don't go to your two seat and be like, oh, my gosh, like, this coxswain stinks. Like, go first to your coxswain and say, hey, like, can you do this for us? Like, can you help us? Or if there's eight of you that do have an issue, pick one to go talk to your coxswain and say, hey, let's work together. Um, generally, your stroke seat's a good person. To, they face your coxswain so they can kind of help remind a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, coxswains, be specific in the boat. And if you miss something, be willing to listen to the rower about what to fix. Yes. Um, hmm. It's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I actually learned to belly talk, as I call it, from a singer. <laughs> um, and he had me go out into the mountains and yell from my belly. Um, so literally I just stood somewhere and he was like, yell. And I was like, ah! And he's like, no, like, yell. Um, and you'll, you'll learn it comes from your belly. But a lot of it is learning to engage your abs as you yell to force air out instead of trying to use your chest. Um, it does take work. It's kind of like when your coach is, for Coxon's perspective to Rose's perspective, 
when a coach is like lowering your hands and you're like, my hands are low, aren't they? And you're like, how do I engage my arms to go down, coxswains? You kind of have to really think about belly talking. Um, but if you get off the water and you're like, wow, it's high pitched or my throat hurts, you probably did it wrong. Um, and know that those signs are it, but a lot of it is learning to engage your abs. When you're going down the course, your abs should hurt at the end of the course if you have done your job right because you're using your abs. So think about that as you go down, like engaging the abs to force air out instead of your chest. It's kind of a more of a body awareness aspect of things than like otherwise. But I literally went to a mountain and like with a friend and just yelled, which is kind of a weird thing now that I say it in public. But um, <laughs> it really does help. Like if you can go somewhere and you can be like, I'm going to yell and not use my throat, but use my belly and think about it. It really does help. Anything else? Well, y'all can fight for it. There's two of you. <laughs> uh, during a race, I've seen a lot of different uh, people coughing, and a lot of them have different coughing styles. Would you say it's better to be more loud and aggressive during, like, let's say, a sprint race, or calm and collected, as you said before? I tend to be a little bit more loud and aggressive during my shorter season, my sprints, than in a long distance. But with that being said, um, it does depend on your boat. If you realize that your voice is panicky or making your rowers not row well, always calm down. Um, a lot of it is boat specific. Who's in your boat? Um, it's just like when two people are rowing and you see the boat steering differently, no, be like, oh, okay, this pair's a little uneven. No, also, like, if I get a novice eight and I'm like, rah, 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 they're not going to do anything. Like, they're going to be like, I have no idea what's going on. Whereas a varsity boat, you can be a little bit more quick-paced. Um, so a lot of it is boat applicable. Um, and that's where the coxswain's like, no. Like, if you're talking and, like, I actually coxed our novice men at practice the other day. And I was just like, all right, that did not work. In the middle of their race piece, I'm like, all right, that, that call did not work. Just forget it. Um, we're going to take 10 to breathe just calm down, deep breaths, and brought them back in, and then I could pick it back up. But if they weren't, they had like eight different catch times. And I was like, oh, they just, I lost them. Um, so be aware of it and then be like, okay, I do need to calm them down. Even though there's only 500 meters left, I have to calm my boat down and be in control of it. Um, so a lot of it as a coxswain is always constantly changing how you're seeing your boat and what you're saying. Um, it makes it difficult because it takes a little while to learn it. Um, but yes, um, Michaela, did you solve your other question? Um, I remembered your name. I'm really proud. Just thought you should know. Yeah, um, as a coxswain, you can't tell you how. Mm -hmm. I've been having microphone problems. How do I know that I've lost my voice more times in the past season than I have? How do I not lose my voice? Um, if you are starting to engage your belly and you still use your voice, Cough drops are your best friend. Don't overdose on them. Realize you're not supposed to have them all the time either. But things like making sure before you get in the water that you like had like something warm, like even if it's warm water with milk uh, with um, lemon and honey in it, it'll help. Um, little things like that. Knowing this is going to sound really weird. Drinking milk increases the production of mucus. This is my major coming out. I'm sorry, but realize that it's going to make it harder to talk through mucus. So. Do, try not to drink dairy or eat dairy before because it will change things. But things like hot, warm water with lemon and honey, um, making sure afterwards have cough drops. Um, and then realizing if you don't have to yell, try not to yell. Um, and in an eight, um, your voice will project more if you talk down into the boat instead of up. If you're talking up and the wind's coming this way, your voice is probably going that way. But if you can talk down into the sides of the boat, it'll kind of be more likely to travel down the boat. Um, and the one thing I did, if my Cox box ever did stop, it was like, all right, four seat, it's your job to repeat what I say. But it's only four seat allowed to say it. So then four seats knowing, okay, i got to be listening. And if you said power 10, then they say power 10 really quickly, and then they'll go in. But assign one person to help relay the message, and then you only have to yell back as far as four seat instead of trying to reach bow seat. Um, and then, pending on the situation, if you need to, sit up a little higher and try and talk down to them, like from a distance down. Um, and then it'll kind of project a little bit better. Yes? In a stern cox boat? A good sit, like, seating position? Oh, 
Okay, so what's a good seating position in a stern cox boat? Um, feet on either side, wait, stern cox, yeah. Sit, feet on either side of your cox box. Um, brace yourselves. Don't think that because you sit, your job is just to sit. Um, if you're sitting and you're hanging out on one side of the boat, your boat's gonna be tipping. Um, so sit centered, um, more so a note for men. Men like to carry their weight in their chest area. Women carry it in their hips. Men, learn to sit heavy in your butt. I know it sounds weird, but if you can get your weight low in the boat, the boat's not gonna tip up here, it'll be tipping down here. Um, a good thing is to get on a yoga ball and just try and learn to move your hips a little bit, salsa dancing, anything you want. Anything that moves hips, you'll learn a little bit of body engagement. But a lot of it is sitting as centered as possible and balanced. And then if you ever get in a bow loader, again, lay centered. Realize that you kind of leaning one side or another will affect things. But be as centered as possible. And then again, engage your abs and your core to be sitting stable um, and centered in a boat. Just like if you guys ever do a gun old balance drill and your rowers are balancing, Think about the same thing. You guys should still be engaged. You just don't get an order to help you out. On that similar note, uh, <coughs> specifically to you, do you think that steering during the stroke or during like a specific like drive recovery uh, centers? A lot of mm. people say a lot of different things about like yes. steering is that what is your like, Um Okay, if you ever this is gonna be a personal cox thing, so sorry coaches if I defy what you said. Um Okay, try and steer as much during the drive as you can. If your boat is going to move well during the recovery and you know that when, you're, when their oars are in the water, you're not moving, again, steer. Um, realize that your steering will affect them. So I know from my crew, as I learned, on like really sharp turns, I would hold the steering and they would eventually, after it took them a little while, but they got set on a turn and they started to do well. Um, but again, things like that, it's kind of boat specific, coxswain specific, but I did steer during the recovery at times, but as little as possible because your boat does move quicker there.